Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. In this video, I want to give you some motivation for generalizing the usual conception of topology. And I'll do that by presenting what's called the ATAL cover open cover analogy. So to begin with, let's have a little think about why we want to use the notion of topology. Well, one thing that topologies allow us to do is to talk about local phenomena. And then once we start talking about local phenomena, we can do things like local global analysis. And one area where this is extremely important is in the theory of vector bundles and more generally in the theory of sheaves. So for this little motivation, I want to present the simplest example of a non-trivial vector bundle, and that's uh, the Mobius band. Okay, so uh, what is firstly a vector bundle? So you should think of this as a vector bundle being on some sort of topological space as just a vector space over each point of that topological space and one that varies continuously. Okay, so that's uh, just briefly how you should think about a vector bundle. So in the case of the Mobius band, what do we have? We want to think of this as a line bundle on the circle S1. And initially, I'm going to look at S1 as just the set of complex numbers instead with modulus equal to 1. Okay, so just in brief, how do you think naively about this Mobius band? Well, firstly, uh, you should think of this as you take a usual band, okay? So the usual band, okay, if you think of it over some sort of a line segment, will be just a copy of a line, so that's going to be a copy of R across each point of that line segment. And then when we come back to where you start, when you go around the circle and get back to where you start, you're going to paste it in the opposite direction. Okay. So really, above each point of the circle, you will have a copy of the line R. But the point is that as you travel around the circle, when you get back to where you start, you've pasted the uh, copy of R in a direction which reverses the orientation. Okay. So this is an example of something that's not a trivial line bundle. The trivial line bundle would be where you just take S1 and you form the Cartesian product of that with R, S1 cross R. That would be just a cylinder. Okay. So here we don't have this trivial line bundle, we have the first non-trivial uh, line bundle which is the Mobius band. Okay. So uh, it is not the trivial bundle, but one thing that you can do is that uh, if you cut it, okay, this Mobius band, of course, you can flatten it out and it will be trivial, okay? It will be just an open interval across this R, okay? And the way we'll do that mathematically is that we're going to look at an open cover of this S1, okay? The open cover U1 union U minus 1, okay? U1 will be where you just remove the 1, and U minus 1 where you just remove the U minus 1. And if you restrict this line bundle to either of those two open sets, you will get something trivial, okay? So L restricted to UX, is just ux cross r, okay? And that just corresponds, as I said, to the fact that if you cut in the, uh, this Mobius band, in other words, you remove either the copy of r above 1 or minus 1, you'll get something that you can flatten out, so it'll just be the open interval ux cross r. Okay, so that's the local part. That's what topology allows you to do, okay? So basically, a vector bundle is something that's locally a trivial uh, vector bundle in the sense that it's a product with some fixed... Uh, finite dimensional vector space, okay? So the global analysis is how you can, from these local pieces, reconstruct the global object, in this case, L. So the way we'll do that is as follows. We'll take these local things, which we can consider as something that's easy to understand, okay? And so we'll have two of them. You'll have two uxs cross r's, so u1 cross r, and u minus 1 cross r. So we can think of this as two, essentially, sheets, okay? that sit above u1 and u minus 1. And we can think of them now as two separate things, and we think, okay, we're going to glue them together so that we get the Mobius band. So in other words, we'll have two sheets like this, and on the top we're going to glue them so they just match like that, but on the bottom we put the twist. Okay. So for these two sheets what we'll do is we'll look at a copy of uh, u1, which is 1 cross u1, and cross it with R, so that's what um, this bit here looks like, okay? And we think of a separate sheet by taking a copy of U minus 1, that's minus 1 cross U minus 1, and cross that with R. So now that's going to be a separate sheet here. 
And now we just have to glue those two together via some equivalence relation. And there's a standard way of doing that. Uh, and this is a standard procedure for constructing uh, vector bundles, and that's via transition functions. If you want to find out more about this, you can look at my play, um, playlist on vector bundles, and um, there's a video about transition functions. Okay, so what's the transition function here? So what you're going to do is you're going to map uh, theta, which goes from the intersection of these two. Okay, so that's where the gluing has to take place. You glue on the top and on the bottom, so that'll be u1 intersect u minus 1, which I'll denote by u plus or minus 1. And what types of gluings can you do? Okay, so basically you've now split up the line r above each of the points here into one for u1 and one for u minus 1. So there are two copies of r, and you need to identify them. And what are the ways of identifying r with r? So you want an automorphism of this one-dimensional vector space, and the group of automorphisms here is r cross. Okay, so this is the multiplicative group of R, and it has two connected components. That's the most important thing. So the most important value is actually to map it to a plus or minus one in this example here. So we're going to use both those values. So theta, okay, on the top half here, on this connected component, you're going to map it to plus one. So that's where the principal argument is positive, and where the principal argument is negative. Okay, on the bottom, you're just going to map it to minus one. Okay. And so what's the equivalence relation? Okay, so it goes as follows. Okay, so what you do is, well, you've basically looked at uh, a copy of u1 and a copy of u minus 1, okay? And if they both, uh, you look in those two copies and you look above a point u like this one here. So it'll be 1 comma u and minus 1 comma u. And so above those, you've got two copies of the real line, okay? And you want to match them together. And on the top, you just match R, R to R by alpha goes to alpha. So here on the top, theta of U is going to be 1, so alpha just gets matched with alpha. You just glue them together. But on the bottom, what happens is that theta of U is equal to minus 1, so those two copies of R get flipped when you map them together. If you put this uh, equivalence relation generated by this relation here, uh, and you put that on this disjoint union of these two trivial line bundles, okay, then that will allow you to reconstruct this Mobius band, this global non-trivial line bundle on the circle. Okay, so that's the basics of local global analysis in this very simple example here. And I want to up it into a slightly fancier language so we can generalize this to the ATAL setting. So what are we going to do here? So firstly, I'm going to consider this open cover in a different way. I'm going to consider this as a single continuous map F from something to this S1. Okay, so this is going to be made of essentially the disjoint union of U1 and U minus 1. And to make the disjoint union, maybe it's a good idea to uh, do the trick that we did here. We'll take a copy of U1, that's 1 cross U1, and call it V1, and a copy of U minus 1, that's minus 1 cross U uh, minus 1, and call it V minus 1. And then you can take the real disjoint union of these two, so that's a topological space, and you map according to here, essentially by the inclusion of U1 into S1 and U minus 1 into S1. And the key point is that, well, whenever you have a vector bundle and a continuous map, and the vector bundle is on the codomain, you can pull back that vector bundle to the domain. So essentially what happens is that all the vector spaces here, you can pull them back up to vector spaces up the top here, okay? So in particular, if you have a point here, V1, okay, what's the vector space above a point here? Well, you look at the corresponding point downstairs here, and you just pick that vector space that sits above that one here, okay? So all the lines here get pulled back to, essentially, you're going to restrict that line bundle to this U1, okay? So when you pull back this L to this disjoint union, you still get something that's trivial. It's basically just the disjoint union of L restricted to U1, so that's going to be V1 cross R, and L restricted to V minus 1, that's V minus 1 cross uh, UR, uh, cross R rather, and that's of course just V1 disjoint union V minus 1 cross R. Okay, so it's still trivial. Okay, so that's the first thing, uh, first way I want to recast what's going on here, the trivialization. 
The next thing is, well, how do you do the global reconstruction? Okay, well, we want to look at this transition function, and I want to write in a slightly different way. So how do we recover L from F of star L? And the key thing is to rethink what it means to look at this intersection U1, intersect U minus 1 to R cross. And the way we'll do that is we're going to look at the notion of a fiber product. Now, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen this before, I'll talk more about this in the next video in this playlist. But essentially what this will be in this case of topological spaces is that you look at the product of these two spaces here, u1 cross u minus 1. You look at all these pairs uh, first, but you don't look at all of them. You just look at a subset of them. And they're the ones that when you map u1 into s1 and u minus 1 into s1, you get the same thing. So in this case, these are two inclusions. So it's just u1 equals u minus 1. Of course, what you'll get here is you just get um, the diagonal copy of this intersection inside uh, this product here. Okay, so that's what you get. So that's a reformulation which is categorical in nature. That's going to be useful later. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show you a different way of constructing this, but now not using open covers. Okay, and so that's going to suggest a new notion of what open sets should mean. Okay, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to now look at this S1 as R mod Z. Okay, so it has a universal covering. Uh, space, so that's R, and this is the natural quotient R maps to R mod Z. Okay, and one of the things that we know is that this uh, R is actually a contractible space, and it turns out that if you have a vector bundle on a contractible space, then it has to be trivial. So if you pull this L, this line bundle, this Mobius band L to this R, that trivializes it. Okay, so in this sense, we can kind of think of this as, well, this is also like something which is local. When you localize here, okay, you get closer to being trivial, okay, and in this case also, you'll trivialize them. Actually, in this particular case here, you don't have to go all the way back up to R, okay. You can look at an intermediate cover. Instead of modding out by all of Z, you can mod out by 2Z, okay. Uh, R mod 2Z, we'll call that S1 tilde, and that's a double cover of this RZ. Okay, so if you think of this uh, circle here, that's R mod Z. So the elements here are just some real number alpha plus Z. And if you look at what this S1 tilde is, it basically it's going to be a double cover. It's going to be two sheets. I can't draw it, of course, nicely on the board like this. Okay, so this top point here should be the same as this bottom point down here. But essentially, as sitting above this alpha uh, plus Z is alpha plus 2Z, of course, maps to this. But also alpha plus 1 plus 2Z, that's a separate point here in this uh, double cover, but this also maps to this. And uh, uh, they are precisely two points above each point of this S1 like this, okay? And so that's a double cover. So it turns out that actually this uh, uh, pi bar upper star L is also trivial. Okay, so, um, well, that's nice. So in some sense, we can think of this as being like an open cover, which trivializes the vector bundle, okay? So the next question, of course, is, well, how do you recover from here, okay, the vector bundle pi bar upper star L, how do you recover L? And this pi bar upper star L, we'll think of it as being trivial in the sense that it equals S1 tilde cross R, okay? And um, so let's have a little think about what this pi bar upper star L is, okay? So let's just pick um, a point here, and remember the... Mobius band will be some line bundle on here, so above this point you have some copy of R. Okay, so that copy of R, so you've got the pullback line bundle upstairs here. If you look at the pullback upstairs here, you pull that back up so that vector space becomes a vector space above alpha plus 2z, and another vector space, one dimensional vector space above alpha plus 1 plus 2z. So you get two of them, and of course you want to glue them together. Okay. That's what you'll need to do. So how do you glue them together? Well, basically, those two copies of R, you want to flip the orientation so that they go to the negatives. So in other words, the, it's the copy of R above alpha plus 2z, that's alpha plus 2z cross R. How do you identify to alpha plus 1 plus 2z cross R? Okay, well, if you pick uh, an element in that real uh, copy of the reals, V, you have to map it over to minus V. So that's how the gluing works. Okay, 
So that's, that's your gluing. And then the next question becomes, well, how do you know, okay, in a nice general sort of way, when is it that you need to glue? Okay, well, the times when you need to glue is when these points correspond to the same thing downstairs. And that's where the fiber product is useful. Okay, so what we're going to do in here is we're going to look at S1 tilde cross S1 tilde over S1. So um, what are the pairs U, U prime? So U and U prime will be elements of S1 tilde. Uh, both of them will be in there. When are they inside here? So basically, by definition okay, of the fiber product, it's when the images downstairs in S1 are the same. So pi bar of U equals pi bar of U prime. And that's exactly the time you want to, um, in the upstairs, pi bar upper star L, you want to glue U cross R to U prime cross R. So again, what you'll see here is that the key to working out the gluing, okay, the data that you need to do is, well, here you want to look at intersections. And the analog of intersections here, okay, is uh, the notion of the fiber product. Okay, so one of the key things that's kind of interesting in the way Groot and Dick look at this notion of topologies is more general, is that you shouldn't just look at injective sets, open subsets as subsets, okay? Really, when you look at the open cover, that's not going to be an injective map anyway, right? And often, you, it's better to, to, better to think of an open cover as a map like this, which is not injective. And if it's not going to be injective, maybe you can think of the, things like this as open covers as well. Okay, so that's the moral to this example here, and something that will point the way for looking at this generalization of topologies known as a Grotendieck topology. Okay, so the moral of the story is firstly, you can think of this S1 tilde to S1 as some sort of open cover of S1. Okay, it's, uh, so the word open I've chosen here is meant to suggest that we need to generalize the notion of a topology, so this becomes an open cover. Okay. And it's an open cover on which this line bundle L trivializes. The next thing is, so well, what types of things do you have in a topology? Okay, So you talk about um, one of the axioms being that you can intersect two open sets and you can open set. Okay, So you'll need something that's a bit of an analog of that. And that also appears when you try to use uh, this uh, topology, the notion of a topology, to do this local global analysis. You need to look at open intersections of open sets. And the key point here is that, well, uh, even though you don't have injective maps, okay, uh, you have the analog of what that would be, and that's using the notion of a fiber product. So we'll have a look at uh, some of the themes that I hear in more general later in this playlist, but I hope you enjoy this adventure in pure mathematics.